It may be at morn when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come. Yes, indeed, Jesus is coming again. Every sign indicates that very soon the trumpet will sound and time shall be no more. Very soon, all the pain, all the problems that we go through, God has prepared a better world order that soon you and I would be taken into that kingdom. On that note, dear friends, I want to welcome you to the third night of our special Bible lecture series dubbed hope in the dark to god be the glory and i know the lord has blessed you with the first two messages that you have received in this program it is my prayer that by the end of this program you would begin or you would encounter jehovah in a very special way it is my prayer that by the end of this bible lecture series you would have a testimony in the lord if you believe that wherever you are why don't you shout a big amen to the glory of god hallelujah tonight my dear friend god has another wonderful message for us a message that is going to set us free from every lie every error every deception of the enemy and god's word my dear friends whenever it comes it illuminates our path and set us on a higher ground of victory tonight god is going to set you free hallelujah and so if you have not um logged in to show that you have joined us here whether you are watching this live on hope tv ghana or you are on facebook or you are on youtube or on zoom i want you to look on the screen right now the short code that is on the screen as pastor nicholas has said earlier on um star 928 star 452 hash star 928 star 452 hash just dial that short code 100 percent free of charge and then you'll be asked a few questions once you do that we will receive it here then we'll know that you are here with us and then we would also be praying for you i pray that our action team members you have brought your 10 men or 10 women or whoever you brought make sure they log in if you're outside ghana please use the whatsapp number on the screen send us your name and where you're watching us from and then we would keep you in prayer before we get into god's words for tonight i want to invite you for a word of prayer i want you to ask god for a simple thing and that is dear lord speak to me tonight i want to hear your voice god would speak to you may you pray that prayer then after that i will also pray with you Let us begin to bring our prayers to an end. Father, we thank you. We began with you last Sunday and we are so blessed with your words of hope. Tonight we are here. Our request is, Lord, whatever you have for your children tonight, may you speak to us. May you bless us. I pray that, Lord, tonight after your message, May you set us free from every form of deception. May you set us free from every form of bondage. And may we continue to walk on a higher ground. 
as we prepare for your soon coming in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you so much and god bless you for joining in for wherever you're watching from the lord bless you make sure if you're on facebook or if you are on zoom or on youtube make sure you click on the um, share button right now share this message with other people let others also come and join this live broadcast because god is going to do something new in our lives tonight our message for tonight is a special one the message has been captioned lovely lies deadly deceptions lovely lies deadly deceptions on november 4th 1922 now i want you to listen to this very very interesting it is something that is happening in the world today began so many years ago on november 4th 1922 a team of um, archaeologists headed by a british egyptologist called howard carter began excavating the tomb of one of the most popular egyptian pharaohs in the world known as Kentun Tankamon. This excavation took place in a place in Egypt known as the Valley of the Kings. Now, Kentun Tankamon was nicknamed Kentut. Kentun Tankamon, or aka Kentut, was an Egyptian pharaoh who ruled the kingdom of Egypt from the year 1333 up to the year 1323 BC. In fact, this king. He became a pharaoh in, in, in Egypt when he was just nine years old and he died at the age of 19. And so history makes us understand that he was referred to as the boy king. Now, we are not to talk about him. Something else is of interest to us tonight. After King Tutankhamun died, according to Egyptian tradition, his body was mummified and he was buried in a tomb filled with artworks, jewelries, and treasures. In fact, excavations that was done by Howard Carter and his team revealed that there were over 5,000 objects buried with Kintut. What you can see here is one of those items. This is the death mask of Kintun Tankamon. This was what they used to cover his face before they placed him in the coffin and this is 100 percent gold what you see here is the tomb where he was buried made of different pictures depicting different rituals done by the egyptians and these are some of the items that were discovered in the tomb of kentun tankamon in fact he was buried with over five thousand objects the question is why did the egyptians bury this boy king with so many items now this is where it gets interesting remember our subject for tonight is lovely lies deadly deceptions the egyptians believed that their kings or the pharaohs were gods and so when they died or when a pharaoh died in those days they buried the king or the pharaoh with lots of items sometimes they even buried a dead pharaoh with either their firstborn son alive or their servant with the aim that they will go and continue to serve the king in the afterlife hmm. the ancient egyptians believed that when someone died their spiritual body would continue to exist in an afterlife very similar to the to the life here in the physical world but according to the traditions or the belief of the Egyptians, an entry into the afterlife was not guaranteed for everyone. In fact, they believe that the dead or dead people had to negotiate a dangerous underworld journey and face the final judgment before they were granted access. And so the journey to the afterward was actually considered a journey that was full of danger in fact the dead mummies according to egyptian um, um, myth or egyptian tradition the dead mummies these are the dead kings they had to travel on a solar back and pass through the underworld which was inhabited by serpents armed with long knives and fire spitting dragons and reptiles with five ravenous heads more like what you watch in these 
um, adventure movies. Now, upon arriving in the realm of the Duat, that is the land of the God, the deceased, the dead person, had to pass through seven gates. And as they passed through the seven gates, according to Egyptian um, tradition, the, the dead person had to recite accurately a magical step, a spell at each, spot, each stop. If they are successful, then they would arrive safely at the hall of Osiris. That is the god Osiris, the god of judgment. At the hall of Osiris, the, the god of the dead performed what is known as the weighing of the heart. This ceremony was, was done to determine whether a person's earthly deeds were virtuous or not. Hmm. Now the weighing of the heart was overseen by a jackal-headed god called Anubis. And the judgment was recorded by the Egyptian god of writing, Thoth. <laughs> now let's continue. At this place, when they are weighing the heart, the person's heart was placed on a scale counterbalanced by a feather that represented Math, the goddess of truth and justice. If the heart was equal to the weight of the feather, the person was justified and that person would achieve immortality. That means the person would continue then to the afterlife. If the heart was not equal, it means the person was not virtuous when he was alive. And that heart, the person's heart, would be eaten by the goddess armament. That means that the person would not survive in the afterlife. It is believed that when a pharaoh passed through the test, he becomes one with Osiris and that Pharaoh would now continue to paradise and live forever with the gods. Sounds like a perfect Hollywood movie. But the truth of the matter is that this is not a movie. This is exactly what the ancient Egyptians believed. That is why they built those pyramids. By the way, the pyramids are actually barrier ground for their kings. But the truth of the matter is that the Egyptians are not the only people who believed that there is life after death. Many cultures, many religions also believe the same. In fact, some people believe that when you die and you are a good person, you go to heaven automatically. And so according to such beliefs, all dead Christians or all people who died believing in God are currently in heaven. They also believe that if you die and you are a bad person, you immediately go to hell where you are going to burn forever and ever. And so according to this belief, over a thousand years ago, all sinners who died are still burning to this very day. Interesting. Some also believe that when you die, you don't go to hell, neither do you go to heaven. But you go and then you come back, you'll be born again. Not like the Christian concept of born again. But when you die, they believe that you will be reincarnated. You will come back into this world. And according to this belief, popularly, you know, made um, popular by the Hindus, the Buddhists, and all most of these Eastern religions. According to them, if you live the good life, you may come back as a prominent person. But if you live the bad life and you die, you may come back as an animal or even an, in, an, an inanimate object. Some also believe that when you die, you don't go to heaven, you don't go anywhere, but you go to the ghost land. You become a ghost. That is why a lot of Ghanaian movies, African movies, even Hollywood movies, you see dead people, the moment they die, then their spirits will get up and then they begin to hunt people and then they begin to kill those who kill them. They become ghosts and they have all of a sudden some supernatural power to do powerful things. They are in ghost land. That is belief of many Africans to this day. So it is no wonder that there's sometimes you hear stories of someone who died and stories will come saying that they went to live somewhere and that they have given birth and their children have come back home. What does the Bible really say? Some say that when you die, you would first of all go to a place known as purgatory, where you would actually have to go and earn salvation to heaven. If you don't work hard enough in purgatory, according to them, you will be dropped to hell. Some also say, oh, when you die, that is the end. 
when you die you're not going anywhere that is the end in fact to them they believe that that is the end of everything nothing happens again that is the end Shum. all of a sudden you are out the question now is what really happens when someone dies recently we lost so many people people who are close to us what really happens when someone dies socrates was asked this question and socrates did not know he said farewell i go to the way of all flesh but whether to life or to oblivion i know not the great socrates did not could not provide an answer to this question where are the dead people where are our beloved job also asked a very important question in job chapter 14 verse number 14 job said if a man dies shall he live again when a person dies shall the person live again do they continue in the afterlife just as the egyptians believed do they go through a dangerous journey and go to a place where their heart will be weighed what happens when somebody dies my dear friend tonight god's word is going to offer you hope maybe you've lost a loved one you've lost someone close to you and you are still asking the question lord why why do you have to take my my wife my husband my child my daughter my son my my uncle my daddy my my, my mother why do you have to take them away like this you are still filled with whys god's words my dear friend is going to give you hope tonight because when it comes to the state of the dead we can only find one reliable source of information and that is the word of god the bible is the only trusted source and when we go to the bible we get accurate information that gives us exactly what we need to know that will give us hope let's continue in a book of, in the book of ecclesiastes the wise man said something wonderful about exactly and what he said answers our question straightforward ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse number 7 he was speaking about what happens when someone dies ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 says then the dust would return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to god who gave it according to this test and according to king solomon when someone dies what actually happens is a reversal of the creation process solomon understood how god created man he knew that god made man from two elements and so he said when someone dies what happens is that the dust would go back to where he came from and the spirit would also go back to where he came from his body returns to the dust and his spirit returns to the to god who gave it how do we know this well let's go back to the book of genesis chapter 2 verse number 7 talking about how god made you and i genesis 2 verse 7 the bible says and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils the bread of life and the man became a living being a living being according to god's creation order is made up of dust from the ground and breath from god the breath that came from god is the breath of life the spirit or breath is what keeps the body alive that is why james in james chapter 2 verse number 27 said that the body without the spirit is dead and so solomon says when someone dies the breath the dust goes back to the ground as it was and the spirit goes back to god who gave it understand that until god put the spirit in the in the dust there was no living being and so the spirit alone is not a living being the dust alone is not a living being it takes the combination of the dust from the ground and the spirit from god to create a living being and so when someone dies the dust goes back the spirit goes back and my dear friend never be confused the spirit that goes back is the spark of life it is god's spirit god's power not a human being don't believe in that theory that says that we are just we are just a uh, house and our our real self is the spirit no that is egyptian mythology don't believe in that when someone dies 
the power of life leaves the person. The person lies down in the ground and becomes one with the earth. That is why King Solomon, I mean King David, told us in Psalm 146, verse number 3 and 4. He says, do not put your trust in princes or in a son of man in whom there is no hope. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that day, in that very day, his plans perish. When someone dies, you, that very moment, King, King David says, his plans, they perish. They return to the earth. They don't go anywhere. So if that is the case, then the question still remains unanswered. Where are the dead specifically? The answer is simple. Job gives us an answer. In Job 17, verse number 13, Job says, I wait for the grave as my house. The grave is where dead people are. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, the Bible says, when your days are fulfilled, you would rest with your fathers. When your days are fulfilled, you rest with your fathers. Maybe you are confused. Let me explain something. Jesus had a friend. His name was Lazarus. Lazarus got sick and died. Jesus got the information. And in John 11 verse 11, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus actually equated death with sleep. Now he would explain. Listen. John 11, 11 he says, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. When he said that, the disciples were confused. Because where Lazarus was and where Jesus and his disciples walked, it was, a, it was quite a distance. Why would you want to walk just to wake a sleeping man? So they were confused. Then you continue to say in verse 12 to 14, listen to what happened. But they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. Jesus told them, Lazarus is dead. So Lazarus died, but he did not go anywhere. He did not go to heaven. He did not go to hell. He died. He did not go anywhere. Listen to me. It is a deception to believe that the dead are in heaven, or they are in hell, or they are in purgatory, or they are in ghostland, or they have gone to the afterlife. Lazarus died. He was buried. Christ says he was asleep. So the question is, if that is the case, then when, when will they come back? Is there really hope after death? Yes, my dear friend, there is hope. Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, one of my favorite tests, a test that encourages me to know that even after death, there is hope. John 5, 28 and 29, the Bible says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave would hear his voice and come forth. A time is coming very soon when the sound of the trumpet will be heard and Jesus Christ will shout. At that time, Bible says, all who are in the grave will hear his voice. All the dead currently, just as Jesus said, Lazarus was asleep. All the dead are sleeping in their grave, irrespective of where they died or how they died. They are resting waiting for the final day when christ will be revealed martin luther the great reformer in a book entitled the christian hope page 37 says this we shall sleep until comes and knocks or we shall sleep until he comes and knock on the little graves and say dr martin get up then i shall rise in a moment and be happy with him forever hallelujah all the dead ones all our beloved who have passed away painfully do not lose hope because one day soon when the trumpet sound pam, 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 all the dead would rise again and they would be with the lord in heaven that my dear friend is the wonderful hope that we have how do we know that this hope is true well my dear friends we know it is true because the tomb of jesus christ is empty hallelujah jesus's tomb is empty and that is a testimony that all those who die believing in him all those who live believing in him all those who put their trust in him though this body may be destroyed through disease and death one day soon just as christ rose again on the third day we shall overcome that would you say an amen there the tomb is empty. 
The tomb is empty. But again, how do we secure this eternal life? How do we secure life after death? Well, the answer is simple. Many years ago, a famous fetish priest in Ghana by the name of Okonfuanachi. When you come to Ghana, you know him. I will talk about the Ashanti Kingdom in one of the topics very soon. Okonfuanachi. Legend or tradition tells us that this man left with the information that he was going to secure the keys of death. To this very day, he has not returned. My dear friends, do not be believe in fairy tales. There is only one way. There is only one truth. And that truth is in Jesus Christ. John 11 verse 25. Jesus Christ says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though they may die, they shall live again. The key is to death. It's not in a man. The key is to death. It's not in any philosophy. The key is to death. It's found in Jesus Christ. Christ is our hope. That is why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 20 up to 23, it says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Christ has become the first fruit. He has become our prefect. He is the one who, who gives us the hope that even if we die because we have believed in him, we have victory over that. That is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 onwards, the Bible says again, For us in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Christ the first fruit, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. For the trumpet, 1 Corinthians again 15 verse 51, it says, For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall shall be changed we are going to be transformed all our loved ones who have passed away if christ should come tonight before we will go they will be transformed the graves will shake everywhere they are the graves will open and the dead will be raised incorruptible the apostle paul tells us how in first corinthians 15 verse 53 he says for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortar must put on immortality we are not going to ascend to heaven with this rotten bodies everything will be changed dear friends that is the truth don't believe in lies they sound so lovely they tell you oh your dead ones are in heaven it sounds so lovely but it's a dangerous deception it's a dangerous deception it began way back in the garden of eden god says you shall surely die the devil says you will not surely die the devil started the belief that the dead continue to live no the dead do not continue to live they are sleeping waiting for the judgment the bible says everyone will die once but after this comes the judgment when jesus comes all the dead will live again philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Our bodies will be transformed. In fact, King David in Psalm 17 verse 15 also said this. He says, I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Hmm. Believe in God's words. It gives us hope beyond the grave. Don't worry about what you have lost or who you may have lost. One day soon, Christ will change everything. A better world order is coming. When all the dead would come back to life, would you say an amen there? The Apostle Paul describes how it's going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 15 and 17. It says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ would rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air then we shall be with him forever hallelujah 
those who are dead on the day Christ comes, that living will not precede them according to the word of God. But the graves would open. The graves would pop open. All the dead would rise up incorruptible. The corruptible must put on incorruption. Everything that is rotten must be changed. They would be changed. They will be transformed. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead will be changed. And they and all the living we shall meet the Lord in the skies and we will be with him in his kingdom forever and ever. What a glorious hope. We have this hope, my dear friends, that burns within our heart. Hope in the fact that even when we die, our Lord Jesus has conquered the grave. He says, I am he who died and is alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of hate. When you put your trust in Jehovah, Jehovah, will change your life some people say pastor no i don't believe this because jesus christ said about one time a rich man and a lazarus the rich man died lazarus died and the lazarus went to heaven and the rich man went to hell and so when people die they go to heaven and the bad go to hell you see that was a parable christ was using that parable to speak to the israelites who thought they have everything they thought they had the riches they thought the oracle of god belonged to them they had no regard and honor to the commandment of god christ was teaching them that in their riches if they do not repent a time is coming when the end comes they would end up in hell it does not mean that you must take it literal if you take it literal what it means is that poor people are going to go to heaven and rich people are going to go to heaven are going to go to hell it's not true if you take a literal, it means that the distance between heaven and hell is so short that when you go to heaven, you are actually going to be able to see and talk to people who are in hell. How would you feel to see people burning every single day of your life? How would you even feel? To be in paradise then you can actually see people maybe a friend of yours who did not have jesus is burning there you come there every day and a person is burning how would you feel in paradise that was a parable if you take it literal it means that the bible says the the poor man was in abraham's bosom basically abraham's chest it means that when we go to heaven we are going to go to abraham's chest but abraham is not the one who is going to welcome us to heaven the Jews saw Abraham as their father. Christ used that as a parable to teach them a lesson. The truth, my dear friend, is that all the dead are sleeping. But Christ gives us hope even in the grave. When Lazarus fell sick, the Bible says a message, you know, a message was sent to Jesus. Jesus got the message. Lazarus was sick. He didn't come sometimes we cry on god for for healings for breakthrough doesn't come maybe you've lost someone close to you you prayed and wished that the person would have been healed but they died it happened to mary and martha the two sisters of lazarus their friend was jesus christ so i'm sure when lazarus was sick they sent a message telling jesus your friend is sick could you come around come around and heal him but christ never came then according to john 11 christ got a message that lazarus was dead his friend was dead then he said to his disciples let us go and wake him up the day he died jesus didn't come mary and martha were heartbroken how could jesus do such a thing to us how could you ignore us like that your own friend has died and you never came two days later jesus wasn't there lazarus had been buried three days later it is too late all hope is gone they had hope when he was alive when he died there was no hope they at least wanted christ to come around to comfort them but he wasn't there three days has passed they have started going back to their business on the fourth day the news came to town jesus christ is in town People started moving here and there to meet Jesus. The information quickly got to the house of Mary and Martha. I am sure they were angry. I am sure they were sad. That is why according to the Bible, when Jesus got to them, they said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, ah, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. If you had been here, 
A few had been here. Some of us are asking that question. We are saying that a few had answered my prayers last year. If I had gotten married last year, if I had received that breakthrough last year, if you had been here. Sometimes we think that too late applies to God. No. Jesus was four days late. He looked at Mary and Martha and said, look, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I am he who died. I am he who holds the keys of life and death. Roll off the stone. Get rid of what is preventing my friend from coming to life. They saw Christ was serious. And they said, please, he's been dead for four days. But now, by now, the body is rotten. By now, you, you, there's nothing you can do. We forgive you. Probably we forgive you for not coming. But don't embarrass yourself. There were people there. Skeptics were there. People were there to mock the fate of Mary and Martha. Because it seems that their friend Jesus had disappointed them. But Jesus said, please, roll over the stone. He insisted. And they did it. Jesus looked at that dark, empty tomb, that hopeless tomb. At that time, I am sure, all the skeptics were looking at what Jesus was going to do or say. He looked at that dark, empty tomb, and Christ did something wonderful, something nobody had ever seen before. Christ looked inside the tomb and mentioned the name of Lazarus and said, Lazarus! Come forth at that moment. Every eye turned from Jesus into that dark, empty tomb to see what would come out. To their amazement, to their surprise, Lazarus did not come from heaven because nobody dies and goes to heaven. Lazarus did not come from within the earth because there's no hell there either. Lazarus wasn't in purgatory because there's nothing like that. Lazarus was not in the afterlife because he was still bound with a with a with a cloth that they used to cover him the body. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus began walking majestically, not like a zombie, not like a dead person, not like a ghost from a Hollywood movie. But he started walking like a healthy young man and came out of the tomb. Hallelujah. Christ mentioned Lazarus' name and Lazarus came out. Why? Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Tonight, if you would give your life to him, if you would give your life to him, every dead thing in your life, he can bring it back to life. Would you say an amen there? My dear friends, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Tonight, God has exposed that lovely lies about death to you they were nothing but dangerous exceptions and tonight jesus invites you jesus wants to remove the stone covering your breakthrough jesus wants to remove the stone of lovely lies in your life jesus wants to remove the stone of fear of death in your life he wants to remove the stone of deception in your life jesus wants to remove the stone of pain and the misery of sin in your life would you allow him to roll over the stone? There is that darkness in your life. People have put so much fear about that in your life. You sleep and you are afraid of what is going to happen because someone passed away in your home. There is so much fear about what happens when people die in your life. Tonight, Christ says, let me take over. Let me take away that stone so that I can speak life in that empty life of yours. Would you allow him? Would you allow him tonight? Jesus is passing this way tonight. Jesus is passing this way tonight. Yesterday of fear is gone. Yesterday of lies is gone. Another day of good hope has come. Another day of life has come. Another day of victory has come. Would you allow him to come? He says, I have the keys of life and death. I determine what lives and what dies. And so far as I am your Lord, you will live forever in my kingdom. Rise up. Let me pray with you. Tonight you are saying, on this third night, you are saying, Father, after hearing your truth, I want to dedicate my life to you. Because until you give your life to Christ, you have no life in you. I want to give my life to you. Please have mercy on me. Take hold of me. And write my name among those who would inherit eternal life. That opportunity is here right now. Rise up. 
after pray this prayer, I would want you to send me your name that tonight you have given your life to Christ and we'll be praying with you. Send me your name on the WhatsApp number on the screen. After this prayer, wherever you are, just send me your name and your location. Because tonight, whether we are behind TV, state, television or phones or whatever, God is moving. Hallelujah. The spirit of the living God is moving. The spirit of the living God is setting people free. All the lies. He's breaking the shackles of the enemy on your neck. He's breaking them right now. Rise up and receive your victory. Rise up and receive your deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Rise up. It's not everybody, but I'm calling you. You who is ready tonight to receive your breakthrough. To receive salvation and eternal life. Rise up. The truth has come. The truth has come to set you free. Rise up. Let me pray with you right now. I cannot see you, but God is where is there with you right now. Rise up. Let me pray with you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God sees you. God bless you, my dear sister. Mommy, God bless you. God bless you. He has seen you. Daddy, he has seen you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Tonight, we are glad that we're here. We are glad that we could be part of tonight's presentation because you have exposed the schemes of the enemy. You have exposed the lies of the enemy. You have exposed the deceptions of the enemy. And we thank you for this wonderful message that you, by your grace, has given to us. Lord, tonight, I pray committing my friends who are on their feet. You see them, Lord. They are asking you one thing, and that is take hold of their lives. Tonight, they are dedicating their lives to you because you alone has the power to give life, even after death. If they have committed any sin in their lives, Lord, forgive them in the name of Jesus Christ. If they have done things that they shouldn't have done, Lord, forgive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Write their names in the book of life. And let us that at the end of this program, on Saturday, when we crown everything, may those who are on their feet, who must be baptized, may they receive physical baptism in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, so that they would receive the power to live even after that. I commit them into your hands tonight in a special way. Bless them. If the enemy rises against them with lies, may you rebuke the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you guide them, may you lead them all the days of their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. May God bless you, my dear friend. God willing, tomorrow we shall meet. If you rose to your feet and accepted the Lord Jesus, let me hear from you. We are here, Pastor Nicholas is here. We are all here tonight and we are going to be praying for you. Just send me your name and your location. On the WhatsApp number on the screen right now. And we would contact you. May the Lord bless you. Remember, Jesus loves you. He has set you free from lies. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Until we meet again, may the Lord be with you. Shalom. <laughs>